Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It is super helpful. So as most of you know, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, changed the landscape of gaming. In 85, when it was test marketed in the US, in 86, it was released nationwide. It changed the landscape of gaming in the late 80s. It brought us more expansive games, more story-driven games, games that had bigger worlds, more complex games, games uh, where you could, you know, select from all these weapons, just, you know, you had more power-ups, bigger, better, more expansive games, you know. Now, some of you are thinking better, but there's nothing better than the early 80s stuff. Now, I'm a big fan of early 80s gaming myself, but uh, I like the NES too. And one interesting thing about the NES, even though it took gaming to the next level, so to speak, there were quite a few early 80s arcade classics ported to the NES. Games like the original Mario Brothers, a really solid port of Joust, and Cubert, and there's some more behind me here. Not Tetris, that one doesn't count, but yeah, Pac-Man. Anyway, you get the idea. The NES, even though it was an evolutionary leap ahead, it did have a number of early 80s arcade classics on it. However, not nearly enough. Uh, when I got my NES, I would have loved to see more early 80s stuff come out for the console uh, for a variety of reasons. Maybe it wasn't ported to any of the other older consoles. Uh, maybe I just thought it would be a good fit on the NES. Those types of reasons. Um, or maybe it's just a badass game. So I came up with 10 arcade classics, 10 early 80s arcade classics I thought would have been just a perfect fit for the NES. Games that I thought should have been released for the console or just would have been super cool if they would have been. So I'm gonna do the top 10, my picks, and I want you guys to let me know in the comments what early 80s arcade classics do you think should have been on the NES? How cool would that have been back in the day? So I'm gonna do a countdown here. Number 10, Asteroids Deluxe. Asteroids Deluxe was created not terribly long after Asteroids. Uh, it was created to be more difficult because the original Asteroids, uh, people like myself found ways to sort of cheat at it or violate the spirit of the game as Brian Koo from King of Arcades once told me by leaving a small space rock on the screen, letting it drift, and you would keep shooting flying saucers uh, to just rack up a ton of ships, you know, rack up a bunch of points and extra ships. Now with Asteroids Deluxe, you can't really cheat at the game because it's a harder game to play. And one reason is because it has these target-seeking hexagons that split up into smaller triangular missiles that will follow your ship around. So Asteroids Deluxe is a harder game, and I spent a lot more quarters on that one in the arcades than I probably should have, and I would have loved to have been able to play it at home, Asteroids Deluxe is awesome. To this day, when I see it at a free play arcade at a, at a gaming convention, I still fire it up. I love it. And I would love to have seen it on the NES. I uh, just think it would have been a good fit with the system. I think it would have felt good uh, with the D-pad. It just would have been a great game for the console. Number nine, Astro Blaster. Yeah, that was from Sega, but I would have loved to have seen it on there. This is my fantasy list. There weren't many fixed screen shooters on the NES. Not a genre you would see much on the NES, so that's one reason. But also because it was just a kick-ass, super challenging game that I'd love to see at home. It's a, you know, Space Invaders style shooter where you're firing at enemies, you know, that appear above you. Uh, you got your ship down here. But it adds things like uh, temperature and fuel gauges to worry about. It's a, it's a super challenging game. It's a difficult game that I would love to have honed my skills at on my NES. I think they could have done a really interesting port for the NES of Astro Blaster. And again, it would have worked great with the D-pad controller. And Astro Blaster is just not a game you hear about a ton nowadays. Not like something like Galaga or Galaxian or Space Invaders. It's along those lines, but it's a little more obscure, quite a bit more obscure than those. And it wasn't released for any of the earlier, you know, like, like Asteroids Deluxe, it wasn't released for the other consoles, you know, the pre-NES consoles in the US. So it would have been a perfect fit for the Nintendo Entertainment System. That's number nine, Astro Blaster. Number eight, Centipede. Now, yeah, Millipede was produced for the NES. Uh, 
and it just somehow seemed incomplete that you couldn't get Centipede. Now I had great versions of Centipede on my 5200 and my ColecoVision, but I'd have liked to have seen Centipede brought over to the NES. Just to kind of keep, it would have been nice to have Centipede and Millipede, just my, you know, OCD in my mind. There's Millipede, but not Centipede. That just seemed weird. I think one reason I'd have liked to have seen Centipede on the NES, because it was just such a big monster arcade hit. Perhaps if Centipede would have been on the NES, some company would have saw fit to put a trackball uh, for the console. There's no trackball on the NES, and I'd have liked to have seen that for the console. And if Centipede would have come out for the NES, maybe they would have produced a trackball for the console. And then maybe we'd have seen something like Crystal Castles on the NES as well. Now I'm just completely fantasizing, but that's my pick at number eight, Centipede. Let me know what you think in the comments. Number seven, Phoenix, one of my favorite arcade games of all time. And it was ported pretty well to the Atari 2600 and I played that game a lot. But the Atari 2600 version is really too easy. There's no more difficulty levels. There's just, there's hardly, there's really, if I recall, there's really not much in the way of options at all in the 2600 version. And the default is just, it's just too easy. You can play it for a really long time. And plus the NES version would have had music from the arcade game. The, 2600 version didn't have music and like in the mothership level which would have looked better on the NES there were no birds in the 2600 version on that level that would have been on the NES obviously because with the more sophisticated graphics on the NES we would have surely seen that in a Phoenix port on the NES and again this is a fixed screen shooter which there weren't a ton of on the NES so I'd have loved to have seen Phoenix one of my favorite arcade games of all time the game I grew up playing at the quick way near my junior high how cool would have that to have been able to play it on the NES, but no such luck. Number six is not a game I grew up playing in the arcades. I didn't hear of it till years later. I'd actually heard of it before Man vs. Snake, the uh, documentary about the Nibbler champ, Tim McVeigh, playing it. Really good guy, and uh, seems like a genuine article, you know, just a guy that loves classic arcade games, and he's the star of Man vs. Snake, where he plays Nibbler. It's an obscure arcade maze game, and it would have been less obscure if there would have been an NES port of it. So many people hear about this uh, documentary, Man vs. Snake, and that he plays Nibbler, and he you know, gets the world record on Nibbler. Who cares, Nibbler, what is that? I care, I think it's super awesome, and he's a great marathon gamer. Uh, and I finally got to play Nibbler a few years ago in a free play arcade and I found it to be quite a bit of fun But I stunk at it right away and I would have been much better with it I could if I could have played it on the NES back in the day and a lot more people would have heard about it and perhaps Man vs. Snake fewer people would say Nibbler. What is that? That's my number six pick for the NES arcade ports Nibbler all right, number five is one I've mentioned on my channel before, and I do this because a lot of people just don't seem to like it, and I think it's probably because some people just don't give it enough chance, they don't get good enough at it, they don't spend enough time with it, and that is Super Pac-Man. That's an underrated game in my opinion. A lot of people like it, but a lot of people I see that, ah, that's my least favorite Pac-Man game, or I don't like that game, I don't understand why. You get power-ups, you get huge, and you get to go fast. It is awesome. I love Super Pac-Man. And perhaps if it would have been on the NES, maybe more people would have given it more of a chance because you're playing at home and you can play it again and again and again without somebody, you know, without putting in quarters, or maybe you would have played your friends or something. Super Pac-Man, I think, would get more love if it would have been on the NES. And again, there weren't a ton of maze games on the NES, so Super Pac-Man would have been right at home. Uh, you know, there was Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Mania, but no Super Pac-Man on the NES. Would have loved to have seen it. Number four, Peter Pepper's Ice Cream Factory. Now, some of you might be thinking, what? Peter Pepper's Ice Cream Factory? What is that? It is a very hard to find arcade sequel to Burger Time. Probably more of you have played the console sequel Diner on your Intellivision than you have Peter Pepper's Ice Cream Factory in the arcades. I never saw this game in the arcades back in the day, but I've played it since. And you kick, you know, you walk around, you climb ladders, you kick ice cream scoops onto cones, and it is even more difficult than Burger Time. Burger Time can be a tough game because you get trapped without enough pepper. 
Peter Pepper's ice cream factor is even more difficult and that would have been a great NES game. I believe they could have had some easier difficulty levels and it would have been a nice to go along with Burger Time, which was produced for the NES. That would have been a nice little double bill there. So Peter Pepper's ice cream factory at number four. Number three, Mr. Do's Wild Ride. A lot of you guys know that Mr. Do is my favorite video game of all time. I would have loved to have seen the sequel, Mr. Do's Wild Ride. Now, Mr. Do's Castle already had excellent ports for the ColecoVision and Atari 5200, so I won't get too greedy here in this case. Mr. Do's Wild Ride was not ported to any consoles back then, and I would love to have seen it on the NES. Yeah, Mr. Do's Castle too, but I don't have to have Mr. Do's Castle too. Again, I don't want to get too greedy because I do have a great version that I play all the time on my ColecoVision, but Mr. Do's Wild Ride, I would love to have seen it. You climb up roller coaster tracks, you dodge cars, you know, coaster cars and other objects. You grab cherries. It's kind of an odd maze slash climbing game, kind of a hybrid genre of maze and climbing. Mr. Do's Wild Ride, I think it would have got more love if it would have been on uh, the NES because, you know, everybody, I mean, Mr. Do, if you're a hardcore gamer, you know, a retro gamer, you probably know about Mr. Do and have played it quite a bit. But the sequels, not as much, especially Mr. Do's Wild Ride, which is at number three on my list here. And my number two choice, Do Run Run. Here's another obscure Mr. Do sequel. Now, the sequel, the first sequel to Mr. Do, Mr. Do's Castle, it was kind of obscure, but at least it made it to the 5200 in ColecoVision. Mr. Do's Wild Ride, as I mentioned, and Do Run Run, Neither one of those made it to any of the classic consoles. It would have been so cool to see these games on the NES. And Do Run Run, you throw a ball at enemies, kind of like in Mr. Do, where you throw a ball at the enemies. You do that in Do Run Run. Uh, you pick up dots, which is not unlike Pac-Man. Pac-Man eats them. I believe Mr. Do is picking them up. I don't think he could eat all those dots. Anyway, you draw lines to close off sections of the screen, which gives it a bit of a Dig Dug 2 vibe or thin ice for the Intellivision. Uh, kicks a little bit, kind of has the vibe. Pepper 2, those types of games. Uh, Amadar kind of has a little bit of that vibe. Do Run Run, an obscure maze game, would have been amazing, so to speak, on the NES. Man, come on. I would have loved to see this stuff back in the way. I'm just dreaming about what could have been what would have been awesome. I would love to have box copies on my shelf and to still be able to play these on the NES. Yeah, in this days of emulation, you can play the original car arcade versions and there's homebrewers are filling in a lot of gaps. Uh, classic arcade games, they're porting them like crazy uh, to new systems, you know, sort of filling in the gap, these gaps. But I'm going back in the day, I'm talking about during the 80s, it would have been so cool to have these on the NES. Let's get to number one, guys. Satan's Hollow, another game I've mentioned on this channel before. It was my top 50 greatest games of all time. It is one of the coolest games of the era. It was a horror game, sort of a demonic game before horror was a huge genre. Satan's Hollow, it borrows from games like Space Invaders and Galaga and Galaxian and things like that. But it's got this real cool uh, element where you build this bridge that will take you and a screen over to the right. And it's got these great graphics really cool sound effects, killer visuals, great. Just an incredible arcade game. It was ported to the Commodore 64, but did not appear on the ColecoVision or Atari 5200. I don't know if it was just too demonic uh, for uh, back in the day, and it definitely wasn't on the NES. Satan's Hollow is my number one pick for top arcade games of the golden age of the arcade, which I consider the early 80s, that I would have loved to see on the NES. Let me know in the comments what early 80s or late 70s, you can do that too. Uh, arcade classics would you have liked to have seen on the NES? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking this video. My NES Omnibus Volume 2 will be out in late March. Pre-order link is below here in the description. Uh, so yeah, order book. Let me know what game you, know, you would have loved to see on the NES from the late 70s, early 80s, what arcade ports. All right, guys, we will talk to you in another video. If you're a fan of my work, you might want to consider supporting me on Patreon. For just a low fee each month, you get a lot of extra content. Another way to support the channel and my writing career is to buy books direct from me, including the 100 Greatest Console Video Games, the Classic Home Video Game Series. It's like an encyclopedia set. 
and this massive bad boy, the NES Omnibus Volume 1 A through L. I will put links in the description of this video where you can buy books direct from me and where you can support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Nibbler.